Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we continue with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 19, Verse 16. And the chapter is entitled, The Appearance of Sukadev Goswami. We're very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to you and all glory to Prabhupada Maharaj. Yeah, can um, can Pariksit Prabhu would he would be able to read the verse and purport? Yes, Marge. Pariksit is right there. He can do it. Yeah, I'm not able to. Where's Pariksit? Is he? He's supposed to be there. I saw his name. Yes. Yeah. He is actually there. Marge, if if it's I don't know whether he's in the. Well, if you can do it. Can, can I do it, Marge? Is that okay if I do it? If you do it, but if you do it real softly, because I have a splitting headache. So if you can. Oh, do sure, my Marge. No problem. I'll do it. Yeah. You want me to read the verse and the Everything. translation, right? And yeah. the verse. Okay. You read like you're talking to Krishna, you know. Got it, Marge. Thank you. Punascha Buyad Bhagavati Anante. Rati prasangas chatat asrayeshu Mahatsu yam yam upayami shristim Maitriyastu sarvatra na modvi jebhya Translation Again, offering obeisances unto all you brahmanas, I pray that, that, if, I should gain, that if I should again take my birth, in the material world, I will have complete attachment to the unlimited Lord Krishna, association with his devotees, and friendly friendly relations with all living beings. Purport. That a devotee of the Lord is the only perfect living being is explained herein by Maharaj Pariksit. A devotee of the Lord is no one's enemy. Although there may be many enemies of a devotee, a devotee of the Lord does not like to associate with non-devotees, although he has no enmity with them. He desires association with the devotees of the Lord. This is perfectly natural because birds of the same feather mix together. And the most important function of a devotee is to have complete attachment for Lord Sri Krishna, the father of all living beings. As a good son of the father behaves in a friendly way with all his other brothers, so also the devotee of the Lord, being a good son of the Supreme Father, Lord Krishna, sees all other living beings in relation with the Supreme Father. He tries to bring back the upstart sons of the father to a saner stage and to get them to accept the supreme fatherhood of God. Maharaj Parikshit was certainly going back to Godhead. But even if he were not to go back, he prayed for a pattern of life, which is the most perfect way in the material world. A pure devotee does not desire the company of a personality as great as Brahma, but he, but he prefers the association of a petty living being, provided he is a devotee of the Lord. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Mom Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine, Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nir Visesa Sunyavari, Pastyatya De Sitarine, Vanshakalpa Turu Vizja, Viva Sindhuve Vijapatita Nam Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha, Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadahar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktarit Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. As it's mentioned here, you're seeing the perfect living being in the example of Maharaj Pariksit. His main concern or his main objective in life is that he will become fixed in devotional service to the Lord. Uh, when uh, Parvati had cursed uh, Chitraketu, when Chitraketu was flying on his airplane, he came into the assembly of many great sages who was being managed or led by Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva had his wife, Parvati, sitting on his lap in front of all of the sages as the meeting was going on. Chichiketu kind of thought that was a little humorous, and not in a facetious way or in a negative way. He laughed. <laughs> and this caught the attention of Parvati, and she became insulted. And then the whole thing plays itself out that she chastised him, thinking that he knows more than Lord Brahma and other great sages who were there who never said anything. He would remain quiet, didn't counter anything she said. He accepted her chastisement, although in one sense, he hadn't done any real offense. He just thought it was kind of humorous to be his wife sitting on his lap in the middle, in the middle of the sages. It wasn't anything negative. It was just something he thought was unusual. And so he laughed about it. And uh, Parvati, she said that, you know, because of your impudence, then I curse you to go to hell. And she was there. I mean, he's listening to everything. He's not saying anything. But then Chichiketu, very humbly and with great feeling, bowed in front of Parvati and said, Thank you, Mother. Whatever you order for my destiny, I accept. When Shiva heard that, he quoted one very famous verse, Narayana Parasarayana Kusasana Vidyati. That the devotees of the Lord, they are like a compass. It doesn't matter where they are, in heaven, hell, or somewhere else in between. They keep their consciousness focused on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so he glorified Tichuketu for his, his humility and his focus on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, despite... He was forced to take birth as a demon. Now, that demon was Vichrasura, who later on was killed by Indra. Not actually killed by Indra. He let himself be killed by Indra because although he was in the body of a demon due to the curse of Parvati, he, his consciousness was devotional. Therefore, he wanted to be killed so he could go back home, back to Godhead. And that was the actual result of that battle. And so when a devotee is always, whatever situation they're in, they never lose their focus on the Supreme Personality of God because that is their only goal in life. <clears throat> and along with that, as it mentions here, Devotee likes to associate with other devotees. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada uses the famous statement, birds of a feather flock together. People who are musically inclined to associate with others who are of the same uh, God characteristic. You can see that businessmen associate with other businessmen. People have a tendency, according to their likings and their occupation, to associate with people of the same. 
the devotees, they like to associate with other devotees because it helps them to be reminded and it helps them to make progress in their relationship with Krishna. Although they have no enmity against any other living being, be they demon or otherwise, they don't want to associate with something or someone that will make them forget about the Supreme Personality of Godhead or call, act in a different way. Because association is very much influential in how we lead our life. <laughs> it says Prabhupada made a very kind of a interesting statement. You might call it a little flippant the way he said it, but he was making a point. He said there were three things that are the most important thing in the life of a devotee for making an advancement towards the goal of life. And then he listed those three things. He said association, association, association. So he wanted to make a point that, yes, as devotees, we look forward to association with other devotees because he gives us happiness and it gives us uh, inspiration on the path back home, back to God. It reminds us of our own business in this material world. So association is very nice or very much wanted. Now, you might say there are different levels of devotees. This is also explained in the fourth canto of the Bhagavatam, where there are persons who are more advanced than we are spiritually. There are those who are generally on the same level. And those who are in just beginning, they might be called neophyte. They might be in a low, lower spiritual position. So um, a devotee acts differently in three cases in this type of association. As it's explained in the verse from the fourth canto, eighth chapter of Bhagavatam, <laughs> that for a more advanced devotee, when we associate, we inquire from them about spiritual topics, and we offer and we listen to their discourses to gain spiritual knowledge and direction. And we also look for opportunities to render service to them. These are the ways we can associate with those who are more advanced. We call them senior devotees, but people we, we know not necessarily by position in the society, but by their spiritual caliber. Advancement is not necessarily it, uh, understood simply by position. Position may indicate something, but spiritual caliber is also is the main thing which makes a person advanced or not advanced. How much they're absorbed in worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead with devotion. Um, those who are equal, you might say, we call them friends. We develop friendly relationships with them. We share Krishna consciousness to, with each other. We inspire each other in Krishna consciousness. We help each other when we're in our struggles to become Krishna conscious. These are like friends. <laughs> and then the other category is those who are in a lesser position, we look for opportunities to elevate them in their spiritual practice. Sometimes we call that preaching, but not necessarily. It's also called doya. Doya means mercy. Mercy means to show compassion or concern and try to lift one or help one make advancement on the path of devotional service. So a a fixed devotee in Krishna consciousness, whatever position they're in, they relate to devotees in these three different ways, depending on the on the relationship. But, but the most important thing is the, the association of devotees. 
Tantra the non devotees, um, we never we don't have any enmity. We don't consider them to be our enemies. We feel sorry for them sometimes because we see that they're wasting their life in activities which don't bring them any happiness. And at the same time, uh, actually uh, cause harm to themselves and others. <laughs> but what, and so therefore, sometimes if we make plans to some to elevate them through the process of preaching Krishna consciousness. I was listening to Srila Prabhupada earlier today, and he was talking about preaching. He was talking to his assembled disciples, and he was quite enthusiastic in his, in his speech, saying that we must, this is a preaching movement, we must reach out to the non-devotees. We should, he said, each and every one of us, and he said that very clearly, should become a preacher and help the conditioned souls move them closer to Krishna. And he said, anyone who does that, and he quoted some verses, he quoted Krishna's verse in the Bhagavad Gita, the one who preaches this message is very dear to me. He emphasized the importance that this will make one perfect in spiritual life because what is that perfection? As he explained, he says, when you preach Krishna consciousness, you get recognized immediately, he said, immediately by Krishna. And he said, if you're recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then your devotional service is guaranteed. In other words, you'll, you'll make nice progress to the normal life. So, of course, and then he also said it's not easy to preach in this age because people don't want it, but still we, find, we figure out different ways by which to inject this message to the conditioned souls through various programs, through book distribution, through uh, ways that we can bring them closer, such as inviting them to the temples, or giving them some opportunity to associate with devotees in different in different ways. I, I we were just traveling in uh, we were on our way uh, back from Radha Desh Mellows in um, in Belgium. So we were uh, returning to London. There was about thirty of us sitting in the airport on the on the in not in the airport in, in the train port waiting for the next train to take it back and there was one lady she was a little curious about our group so she came over and she started asking questions and then we thought all right let her let her do some service so we gave her a camera could you give us a group picture yeah she was really happy so she did and then uh, I had the opportunity to sit with her, and I spoke to her about 20 minutes or more about what is Krishna consciousness. And then she happened to be on the same train with us, and then she was sitting with the other devotees, and during that whole time, they were talking to her, and then she agreed to come to the temple. They showed her how to chant Hare Krishna. So... Devotees are really eager to spread Krishna consciousness to the conditioned souls. <laughs> so if, if we are exemplary in our behavior and give respects to all living beings, because that is the principle of behavior or etiquette, that a devotee, even though the non-devotees in one sense are not respectable, Still, because they are part and parcel of Krishna, they are spirit souls, Krishna sits in the heart of all of the entities. From that position, we give them respect. And when you give respects to others, you open up a relationship like that, even if it's a very superficial one, still it's a relationship that could lead to something. So devotees are very much aware that um, wherever we go, 
here is an opportunity to, to inject Krishna consciousness into the hearts and minds of the conditioned souls. And of course, beyond that, is that we always think of how to make programs to invite the conditioned souls to come and learn about Krishna consciousness. And particularly in today's world where there's a lot of turmoil and people are feeling the, the pinch of material difficulties more than they have ever before. Like from my observation and from, from the situation we see around us, there's a lot of different, a lot of frustration amongst the non-devotees and their material life is being, by uh, what we see, pressurized more and more. And many of them are looking for ways to improve their life. <laughs> Therefore, we're there to help them in one way or the other. And it says here, you know, he, 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 says, he tries to bring the upstart sons of the father to the saner stage and to get them to accept the supreme father of God. And so that's our business. Um, and to somehow or other, uh, I use the word somehow or other means that whatever way you're inclined towards, somehow or other, use one way or another to do something to bring the conditioned souls closer to Krishna. And it's not hard. I, on that same travel, when we were in the train station, I was in another compartment. And there was a girl sitting on the other side, all alone. I was sitting with one devotee. She kept looking at me. I was dressed in my you know, robes. Finally, she started to smile. And then I understood here, here was an opportunity. So we started a conversation. And then uh, I gave her a mantra card, invited her to come to the temple. She came over and I taught her how to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So if you're ready, Krishna is ready to send people to you so you can deliver them from their, you know, their miserable material life. <laughs> the material life is miserable because there's no goal. The only goal is to somehow or go on and try to enjoy the senses as much as possible and avoid some kind of miserable situation. But nobody's successful because the more ye he some sparse jabulga duka yoni evite avanta vanta kunte and the ramate buddha. Krishna says in the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita that the and the the sources of misery are actually sense gratification is actually the sources of misery. So the more one takes the sense gratification, the more they're compounding their misery. Although it may may initially feel differently, in the long run it causes them more and more suffering. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so there's a little bit about this verse. It's, there's a lot we can say about this verse. Three main points. Focus your consciousness on the goal, Krishna. Open your heart to two others by giving them Krishna consciousness. And be eager to associate and serve the rice nervous. If you do those three things, of course, we might add one more. Read Srimad Bhagavatam, which we're doing now. If we do those four things, then everything is there in our Krishna consciousness. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mata. Such a this is a wonderful class. Amazing points. Uh, definitely a uh, a topic that as practicing devotees we have to hear every day over and over again. Thank you so much. Would like to ask the voters if any questions, any comments, reflect, you know, take, I mean, takeaways, even, you know, clarification, please do, uh, do unmute yourself or you can post the question in your, in the chat and I'll be happy to read it. Does anyone has a question before I ask my question? Okay. 
We'll wait for, for, for Marge to come back to his seat before we ask the questions. Okay. Oh, Priksha, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. Thank you very much for a very nice class. We always learn a lot from you. Um, I also would like to take the opportunity to apologize to you because I was told by my first daughter that she asked me at a time that I was not really back on the station. I was just trying to finish putting on my tilak, and, and that's how I missed the opportunity. First time ever. <laughs> So I'm, I'm profusely sorry for that. And, and please don't stop asking me to serve. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Marge, that's a question okay, yeah, from Jitmitra. Jitmitra, go ahead. You can unmute yourself, Prabhu. Can you, can you uh, stop share screening? Yeah. Yes, Marge. Oops. I, that's, I knew I forgot something. I apologize, <clears throat> Marge. There you go. Jitmitra, go ahead. Uh, yes, yes, Maharaj. Uh, yes, Mataji. Uh, Maharaj, so one uh, point I was kind of reflecting that you mentioned is um, somehow or the other we should preach. So like what I was thinking was if we have a temple and if we are seeing that maybe our temple numbers are not increasing, so that means it's kind of like a limitation on our end that we're not doing a good job. Is that like, how would you look at it, Maharaj? I, I don't think it's so much we judge things by numbers. We judge things by quality, mm. by how much those persons who are coming are taking to Krishna consciousness. We find sometimes people just like to come to the temple, either to meet their friends or to see the deity, offer some dakshin, take some prasadam and go home. What we want is when people come, we give them a chance to learn about Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said we should have programs for the people that are coming to educate them in the science of bhakti. And if we do that, then we'll develop a quality of our congregation that is, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, making progress towards the goal. So numbers mm, are nice, but actually quality for those who are actually coming, how much are they actually taking advantage <clears throat> and learning how to kind of perform devotional service. They're learning the philosophy, they're eager to serve, they're making friends with the other devotees. These are indications. <laughs> Hope that helped, Jit Mitra. Yes, thank you very much, Maharaj. I understood the point. Thank you. Marge, I have a question while others are thinking, Marge, is um, how do we identify or how do we know our equals? Well, devotees always think themselves less. <laughs> But usually equals are understood by those who are um, practicing on the same level, pretty much. Um, so we can see, we might consider to be, consider in general, equals are the majority of the number. Those who are new coming to, just coming, learning about it, they are considered to be uh, objects of compassion or preaching. Okay. And then we understand those who who have been mm, who are preachers who are fixed in their devotional service who don't waste time with material life. They're more advanced. <clears throat> and so it's not always a easy observation but the 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 observation is the devotees are generally in the mood of a service. So if we're always in the mood of service, then we're always in the best position to have relationships with others. 
That means we don't come to the temple simply to enjoy Krishna consciousness. We come to serve. <laughs> We come to do our yeah. service. We serve the the Lord. We serve the devotees like that. So mm -hmm. then it becomes a little less uh, specific, but more incidental <laughs> in our relationship. And then in that relationship, we more or less to make, develop friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marge. When you learn, you learn. After a while, you start to see how to relate to others. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, if the spiritual master comes in, and then you understand, yeah, she should offer some service. You should ask him to speak like that. Mm. That becomes obvious. Mm. Thank you, March. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Yes, Pritchard, go ahead. Krishna Maharaj, please accept on holy basis as all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Um, practically every temple, this this thing happens, and and uh, Harrisburg is no stranger to that now. Unfortunately, um, sometimes the bodies uh, relate to each other really based on their cultural background, based on basically you know whatever they find from the bodily standpoint. Uh, that they they can relate to each other or understand about each other. But because of that, some people may feel left out in of the association. And I've practically everywhere that I've gone, I've seen this. And, and our temple is it's also happening there. What's one of the ways in which we can break that 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 um it's Maya actually when you think of the body. <laughs> But this is it's going on. There's some practical ways in which people can be made to understand that everybody is really at the same level. Hi, Krishna. Well, yeah, that's a sort of a that's sort of a material tendency which is there within the conditioned souls. But a devotee sees everyone as part and parcel of Krishna, servant of Krishna. So the relationships. <clears throat> have to be based on the mood of service. If you think mm -hmm. I'm only going to serve people who are like me, then you haven't understand the principle of service <laughs> because you're making you you you're doing it from the bodily concept of life. Mm -hmm. I talked about that. Even he had that same situation in when he when he was bringing his movement into being, uh, devotees would relate to each other based on, uh, you know, their nationalities, their particular ways of doing things that were similar. Uh, that, in, in one sense, is just natural from the material point of view. But you might say, if we don't get beyond that after some time, then we'll, we will we'll start to see everything in a material way. So it may start off like that, and that's nothing wrong, but it shouldn't shouldn't stay on that level. Mm -hmm. it should stay at that. Okay, here's a devotee. Uh, he's coming. He's a new person. He might be from a different culture, a different. Uh, background, but let me uh, spend some time talk to him, find out why he's coming, like that. Uh, it's not about about to get into a different types of what we call it cliques. This is my this is my group. That's your group. <laughs> it happens. It's there. But we should get beyond that. So it's not surprising that new people do that, but we have to encourage them to well, mix with others. By yeah, we should be the encouragement through our own example. Mm -hmm. If we be the example for what we're trying to uh, 
inspire in others, then it becomes easier for them to learn and to do it also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marsh, I have a question. If if someone else wants to jump in, you can raise your hand. But Marsh, I have a question. Is um, you 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 touched upon um, Vaishnav Sarachar and etiquette, and we and as you mentioned that devotees on the equals as friendship. Um, how can we avoid or uh, offending devotees if they are equal, or does that? matter because they're friends equal level then where does the Vaishnav sergeant and etiquette come to play off yeah well in that verse from the Bhagavatam it talks about the wrong way that we associate with these three, three different categories one is that when we uh, see someone more advanced than us we become envious of them when we see someone who is on the same level, we talk about our own deeds and try to impress people who are of the same category as we. You have such a good friend. I have so many good qualities. You should know about them. And the last one is that when you, the ones who are in lesser position, we deride them, we push them down rather than raise them up. So in that same verse, Srila Prabhupada in the purport makes these points. <laughs> that in the friendship group, well, it's not like I'm always talking about myself and find, telling you how wonderful it is that we have association together. Therefore, you should appreciate me for such being a, such a wonderful friend. <laughs> it might not be so overt, but it may be something that is there within our consciousness. It'll come out in the form of activity or in the form of speech. So we always should take an interest in others and see what we can do to serve them. So the service is always the medium by which we connect with each other in all three of those groups. Yeah. <clears throat> it's always service. It's not anything else. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Marge, that's a question that came, uh, that was sent to me for the class because this person is outside of the of the Zoom, uh, but he's hearing it from YouTube. Marge, uh, he's, it is actually a Sar Sarvanga Prabhu. He says, Marge, please accept my humble obeisance of August Yashar. Prabhupada Kijai, we have new devotees coming in nowadays. What can we do to take care of them and also without pushing them a lot to get them chanting. Well, be an example. Bring them in. I think kindness and concern is the way we preach in this age, especially for new people. Showing them some kindness, giving them some time. Even taking personal interest in their, in their life. There's a way to develop that relationship where they start to they start to trust you. They start to feel, uh, what we say, relaxed and peaceful in your association. And gradually, you introduce the process. I think so. In the old days, when we would expect everyone to jump right into the process without even... Uh, having any kind of relationship with others. Of course, that was there to some degree, but not complete. So the idea is, I think it's friendship and kindness which inspires people in their practice of Krishna consciousness. Marge, I remember um, listening to a class by uh, Ratika Roman Prabhu. And I'm trying to think, oh, yes, I remember now in New Vindavan in 2019 for a GBC college training. And he mentioned the same thing that you mentioned, Marge, that in today's age, what attracts people is the friendship and kindness. And then, and as you mentioned, taking personal interest, you know, to, in, in their personal life so that they feel much more, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, 
warmth and welcome and they feel uh, cared for, I think is what. So he really focused on that. Friendship and kindness too. Hmm. The importance of uh, for, for new people. I think for those who are preaching, they know that. They use that. And it's, yes. not our, it's not artificial. It's not that we play these roles. Lodi is by nature kind. <laughs> That's the first principle out of the 26 qualities. <clears throat> 26 qualities of a vice of the first one is kind to all living entities. Thank you, Marge. Marge, there's another question I have. This was such a deep class about, you know, devotees and um and um in the last sentence, Marge of the words, I'm trying to understand uh where Sri Prabhupada said that Marge Prichard was certainly going back to Godhead. But even if he were not to go back, he prayed for a pattern of life, which is the most perfect way in the material world. Marge, what is that? Most perfect way, Maharaj. Emotional service. <laughs> that's what I was guessing, but I wanted to ask you. <laughs> yeah, and that's mentioned in the in the translation. Wow, devotional service. Um, yeah. yeah. Please Harida, go ahead, Maharaj. When Harida Sakura was asked by Lord Chaitanya, during the Mahaprakash Leela, when Lord Chaitanya presented himself and who he actually was, the Supreme Lord. And in that in that mood, he was giving benedictions to all the devotees. And Haridas Thakur simply said, My dear Lord, whatever birth I take, let me be take birth in the house of your devotee. Even if it's like take birth as a dog, at least I'll be able to get the remnants of their food. <clears throat> so a devotee always wants to associate with devotees. <laughs> they feel hor hor horrified if they have they lose that association, or they're forced into association with the non devotees because of circumstances. Sometimes. <clears throat> They would rather associate. They, we, we associate with the non-devotees for preaching, but that's not association. Prabhupada, in his talk this morning, I was listening to him, he said, we give them our association. We don't take their association. <laughs> because we have something to offer to them. And they don't have anything to offer to us. <laughs> But Maharaj, I, the, in order for us to not take their association, but give them our association, does that mean that that devotee or that, that devotee should be spiritually strong and not get sucked in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because people do get sucked away, even devotees. Yeah, your Guru Maharaj always talked about bridge preaching, how that it's like fishing, but if you if you're fishing and then you get pulled and you fall into the water, and what's the use of your attempts? So you don't want to become like them just to try to raise them up. <laughs> but an advanced devotee will not be influenced. Then Maharaj, so what? Sorry, Maharaj. The advanced devotee will not be influenced so much by others. They'll always keep their focus on Krishna and devotional service. Thank you. Then, Marge, how, what, so what, what's coming to my mind is if, if one is not spiritually strong, then it's safe <clears throat> that they stay away from such association if they're not able to uh, give and take, right. right? Because they can get sucked in easily. Yeah. Then how can they make themselves spiritually strong, Maharaj, so that when they're in that association, they don't get sucked in? You know the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hare Krishna, read the books. Yep. Emotional service, the process is what makes you, it gives you the 
advancement. The more you become attached to chanting the holy names of the Lord, the yeah. more you're making progress in devotional service. I I ask much because sometimes I find myself repeating the same answer and it's not heard. So I feel bad. So I said, probably it comes from even much stronger. <laughs> That's why I ask. Because my words carry no weight sometimes, Maharaj. I knew you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> my words don't carry much weight, Maharaj. <laughs> Yours do. <laughs> sometimes it's easy, I would say. Maharaj said so and so. And then, oh, oh okay. <laughs> then, then I... <laughs> yeah, so much, so much I have to quote your name, Mark, just to get them to answer. I mean, you know. Well, what can I say? <laughs> you knew the answer already. <laughs> yes, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, Krishna Chaitanya, amazing. Yes, any other questions from devotees? Please, I do add this as a very nice, deep topic. And like Mata, it can go on forever and ever you know, about uh, different levels of friendship and devotees. And um, is there another question that's coming to me? The, um, yeah, so please do ask. Yes, Pritchard, go ahead. Sorry. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept from the basis. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so sometimes, as you were talking about, um, the bodies relating to each other, um, and this happens also all the time, situations come up and there's, um, disagreement or sometimes people lose it and then they begin to say things that are unfortunate or act unfortunately. Um, other times too, in their relationship, they don't understand that when conflicts arrive, it's you know it's it's important to have it resolved. And sometimes they just want to say, "Oh, oh, no, forget about it. We'll be all right." And that goes on. And then um, my fear is, apart after that, this disagreement, this discontent simmering at the back of some of the bodies. Um, so how to actually get over the situation and stress the importance of resolving things and apologizing and so on, you know, to, to just bring things to a, to a head and also to an end. So people have clarity about you know, their relationships and what they should do when situations come up. Yeah. yeah if there's some discord, uh, disharmony, the body wants to rectify it by discussing it, by, uh, yeah, by uh, trying to somehow ameliorate it in different ways. Yeah, when it comes, I had a similar situation where uh, I was responding to the questions of a person and the person wasn't um, understanding my answers and kept mm -hmm posing questions based on my answers and it was like endless and that, after some time I got a little bit uh, I just said well if you don't like my answers then go somewhere else <laughs> and uh, so I and then uh, that lady it was a lady and she just dropped off and then uh Later on, I found out she was a little discontent about the relationship, so I made some effort to try to contact her and try to ameliorate it, even though I didn't feel like I was wrong because I tried to answer her question. She just seemed like, from my position, she wasn't able to understand my answers and just kept going around the answers by asking questions somewhat similar, but not in relationship to my answers. So it was becoming a little bit like a merry-go-round where nobody was getting anywhere. So I thought, all right, well, I tried. So go somewhere else if you can't, if you don't want to, you know, you, there's other people you can inquire from, from. But then again, um, then I thought, well, you know, I want to break this uh, feeling that she has towards me. So I made some effort to contact her. It was just to see if we could somehow or other uh, 
overcome that. So, you know, I try to be sensitive to the fact that even though I felt I wasn't wrong, I did my best, at least I, from my perspective anyway, but still she couldn't feel, see that. So, so to break that misunderstanding, you know, I made some effort to communicate again. That's an example. So even sometimes we just have, even if we're right, in, but, but, but because there's disharmony that comes by way of the interaction, we have to put the idea aside that I'm right just to somehow bring back the relationship to a, to some degree. <laughs> That's just an example. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very important example. This, this speaks a lot about compassion and what to do in situations like that. Thank you very much. Mm. Yeah, that's right, compassion. I mean, Marge, like you made the effort not once, but not twice, but you know, to to, to really solved the situation so that she doesn't feel that way. That was, yeah, two, three times. Wow. Amazing, Marge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other points from devotees? Any other questions? Anything that you would like to ask? We're approaching the one-hour mark. Brickshit, do you want to say something? You just unmuted yourself. You want to say something? Oh, no. I was oh, just oh okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. If there... Isn't any question, Marge? Would you like to end with a round of chanting? I know you have a headache, you said. Yeah, I do have some rounds to go. So it'll be an opportunity to, to chant with the devotees. With the okay. Devotees.